Welcome to this video on SQL Server 2019 Big Data Clusters on Dell EMC PowerStore using the PowerStore CSI driver. This video covers big data clusters from a very critical component of the big data cluster environment, the storage layer. In addition, we'll deep dive into how storage is provisioned on PowerStore and interacts with the big data cluster environment through the PowerStore CSI driver. For more information on big data clusters and virtualized environments, refer to the links at the end of this video. Let's begin with an overview of the SQL Server 2019 big data cluster environment and the various components. Here is an architecture diagram produced by Microsoft of the components within a big data cluster. Note that the components are divided into pools. These pools require storage that will be residing on PowerStore. So to provide some context, let's take a look at the various pools. The compute pool provides working space for computational tasks in the cluster. The data pool provides scaled storage for data imported into the cluster and contains polybase for working with and importing external tables and data sources. This can be used as a cache for external data to be stored locally. The storage pool contains HDFS and Spark for ingesting and working with large file-based and unstructured data sets. The master pool contains a SQL Server instance for hosting high-value OLAP or OLTP workloads. Traditional SQL Server databases can run inside the master pool. For example, you can copy SQL Server database backup files onto the cluster and restore them to the master instance running inside the master pool. You can also connect this instance with any of the traditional tools or applications such as SQL Server Management Studio, ODBC applications, etc. Each one of these pools requires persistent storage. By default, storage within a Kubernetes pod is ephemeral and therefore is deleted when the pod is recreated. In order for data to exist beyond the lifetime of the pod, persistent storage is required. The persistent storage layer at the bottom in this case is PowerStore, and Kubernetes access to PowerStore resources is being provided by the CSI driver. Here I have a Kubernetes environment already built according to the requirements in the SQL Server 2019 Big Data Cluster Deployment Instructions running Kubernetes 1.16 on RHEL. At this point, if the PowerStore CSI driver is not installed, it needs to be installed, configured, and tested before proceeding. As mentioned earlier, the PowerStore CSI driver can be found on github.com slash dell along with complete instructions. Something to note about the PowerStore CSI driver deployment is that it will attempt to create the host entries on the PowerStore appliance during the deployment. Therefore, there are a couple of things worth noting. First, by default, the host names created can be a bit cryptic, so if you want to use more meaningful host names, this can be changed in the PowerStore CSI driver configuration. This is stored in the myvalues.yaml file that was covered in the PowerStore CSI driver installation. Let's look at an example configuration. The node name prefix is a prefix that will be used for the host names created in PowerStore. This can be used to make sorting the display a bit easier. The node ID path is what will be used as the second part of the name. The default is to use the value in ETC machine ID. However, the value in ETC host name may be more user friendly. For example, this is what the value of ETC machine ID looks like whereas the value of ETC host name looks a bit better. Now, looking at the PowerStore UI, we see a host name with a prefix of CSI node, which is the value of the node name prefix, and SQL Perf 21, the value from ETC host name. In this example, the hosts already have a volume mapping because they are mapped to the boot volume leveraging boot from SAN. The second item worth noting related to host names is that prior to installing the PowerStore CSI driver, if the host is already configured on PowerStore, the host name needs to match the PowerStore CSI driver naming format. If the exact host name the driver is trying to create already exists, that's fine. But if the CSI driver installation doesn't find the host name it's looking for, it will try to create one. If that host has already been added under a different name, a conflict will occur and the PowerStore CSI driver installation will fail. 
If changes are needed to the PowerStore CSI driver configuration, simply modify the myValues.yaml file and run the PowerStore driver uninstall and install scripts to use the modified behavior. Once the PowerStore CSI driver is installed and configured, examining the Kubernetes storage classes, you will see two PowerStore storage classes created. The default PowerStore class provisions ext4 volumes, while the PowerStore XFS class provisions XFS volumes. Either one of these file systems can be used with big data clusters. Now that the big data cluster installation requirements have been satisfied, a big data cluster can be deployed on PowerStore storage. Let's get started deploying a big data cluster on Dell EMC PowerStore. Complete instructions for deploying a big data cluster can be found on the Microsoft website. One of the things that's different about deploying applications on Kubernetes is that Kubernetes allows for dynamic storage provisioning. In this case, this means that storage volumes will be created on the PowerStore appliance when a big data cluster is deployed. This is quite different than traditional applications that it typically requires storage to be provisioned in advance. Therefore, one of the mandatory input parameters to the AZ Data utility which installs the big data cluster is a storage class. One is required for data volumes and one is required for log volumes, and it can be the same for both. By default, it will create several data and log volumes using a default size of 15 gig for data and 10 gig for logs. For an actual environment, these sizes will likely be insufficient and therefore need to be changed. This is done through config profiles. These profiles allow several deployment parameters to be specified and overridden. Complete instructions for building config profiles can be found at the link above. Now let's take a look at a deployment in action. The first thing we're going to do is create a custom config file based on one of the available deployment templates. The one I'm going to use here is kubeadm-dev-test and it's going to be stored in a folder called custom. Complete details are covered in the BDC deployment instructions. Next, I'm going to edit this config profile to specify the values I mentioned earlier. The first value worth mentioning is the BDC cluster name. This name is the namespace that the resources will be deployed into, and by default it is msql-cluster. This is important to know since Kubernetes resources need to be referenced by their namespace. Next is the image tag of the version being deployed. Also, to speed up deployments, the image pull policy can be changed if not present, if desired. This will use the existing container images rather than download them each time. This could be from a prior deployment, or you could use the docker pull commands to stage them locally. This is covered in the offline deployment section of the BDC deployment instructions. The storage section is where we specify the parameters for the volumes being created. The class name is the storage class of either PowerStore or PowerStore XFS that was created during the PowerStore CSI install. The size is the size of the volumes that will be created. As of BDC version 2019 CU4, this cannot be expanded. Therefore, adequate sizing is critical. Since PowerStore uses thin provisioning, it will only allocate storage as it is needed, up to the size we are specifying here. In addition, the PowerStore data reduction features will further optimize space utilization. For this example, in order to provide plenty of space, I am going to specify 10 terabytes of data for volumes and 5 terabytes of data for logs. Now that the deployment parameters are set, the big data cluster can be deployed using the AZ Data utility, providing the config profile and accepting the license agreement. As the deployment progresses, volumes will be created on the power store. First, the deployment will create a persistent volume which is storage volume itself. By the time the deployment is complete, 13 data volumes and 13 log volumes will be created. Each volume will be mounted to a single host, 
which is the host that currently runs the pod that owns this volume. Once the deployment is complete, the volumes that were created can be viewed by listing the persistent volume claims, passing in the name of the namespace, and then a list of labels used to describe the pods that will be additional output columns. This shows all the volume claims created in the MS SQL cluster namespace. Microsoft did a nice job of attaching relevant labels to the cluster resources, so the pool column ties back to the various pools in the architecture diagram. The volume name displayed is the name of the actual volume on PowerStore. Now let's take a look at the volumes on PowerStore using one of our volume names here. In the PowerStore UI under Volumes, all 26 of the volumes that were created during the BDC deployment are listed. Using the filter, the volume name we copied from the persistent volume list can easily be found. Working with sets of volumes in this fashion can be simplified by placing them into a volume group. Let's create a volume group now called MS SQL Cluster. Then add all the newly created volumes to the group. Now, in our volume group list, we can track utilization for the entire group of big data cluster volumes. Inspecting the MS SQL cluster volume group reveals more statistics such as capacity, performance, and historical usage to be viewed for the entire group of volumes, simplifying the management of storage resources for our big data cluster. Thank you for watching this video on SQL Server Big Data Clusters on Dell EMC PowerStore using the PowerStore CSI driver. For more information, here are some additional resources related to PowerStore, the PowerStore CSI driver, and big data clusters, as well as the links mentioned in the video. Dell.com slash storage resources has a lot of outstanding content for not only SQL Server, but various other applications as well. Dell.com slash PowerStore docs is a wealth of content on PowerStore containing manuals as well as in-depth white papers on various PowerStore features and capabilities. Thanks for watching.